This is the Pearl 62. This is a boat I've been very keen to get on the channel. This actually launched at Dusseldorf in January, and finally we get to go on board of it. So we're going to start at the back. There's a couple of things to mention before we even really get up into the cockpit. You'll notice there's tracks in this bathing platform. The reason for that is this is a high-low platform. However, there's also a jet ski garage in here. So this will take a Sea-Doo Spark, and what you do is you lower the platform to launch your tender, and then that whole transom area lifts up and it slides on tracks out onto here and you can drop it down into the water. What is clever is they've designed this so as well as going up and down it'll actually extend out horizontally so you can get that door open even if there is a tender on the bathing platform without launching it. It's a very clever touch. Also worth mentioning that as an alternative to the jet ski garage you can have a crew cabin in there but I think for this size boat which are usually owner operated this is probably going to be the most popular system I suspect. There's a little transom shower here You'll be out swimming and there's an extending passerelle plus turn to boarding just there. But literally as we climb onto this boat you can see the detailing that goes into there. There's so much design. I mean it's a real designer boat. And I love this white caulking in the teak as well. Little touches like that just really set these boats apart. There's a big overhang on the back here of course and then you've got this lovely dining area and there's a small bar area on this side and you'll notice that this whole section opens out so there's a window that drops here these doors hinge away so you've got this really open connection between these two areas we're gonna head inside first of all but we're gonna do the full tour of course now this one has the oak interior it's a Kelly Hoppin design as pearls always are there's different versions so this is what they call the modern there's a luxury as well which has darker wood and all sorts of other options as well this, however, I think looks very nice indeed. It's very sort of, you know, Manhattan loft sort of feel, isn't it, with this light wood? And again, it's details. Look at the way they've done this, for example. And little touches like the power sockets here. You see this in kitchens now, but you rarely see it on boats. It's a really good idea. It's Miele cooking. There's a big fridge freezer on that side. Dishwasher lives in here. And one thing I do particularly like is look at this. You see this return? You can slide these open. Not only is the cutlery in there, but it's all held in these little shaped things, and it is, and how well you can see that, is the proper pearl logoed cutlery. How lovely is that? Right where you need it, very, very practical, but also just a nice design touch. Opposite that, there's a little dining area, a little breakfast bar, or call it what you will. Great place to have a little bit of coffee in the morning, that sort of thing. I mean, often with this sort of boat, you tend to dine outside, but that's a great area where you can sit in if you want to and grab a bite to eat or a coffee in the morning. And then ahead of that is the saloon area. Very open. What they've done, in fact, with this is they've extended the windows. You've got the windscreen and then there's windows up above them. That's very much a pearl feature. I've seen that on their other boats. And it throws loads of light into here. And again, it gives it that kind of loft apartment feel. Big comfortable sofas around the place and a pop-up TV as well. That is really nice. And ahead of this is the helm. What's quite neat with this, it's a double helm which is pretty normal but they've actually put the access between which means that somebody here doesn't have to climb over somebody here to get in and out. Sounds a small detail but actually it's really nice. It's all glass bridge so all your instrumentation is all displayed on these screens and it's got this low glare finish so it doesn't reflect in the screen and then over here next to the helm we've got an opening door so that gives you access straight out onto the side deck and onto the front of the boat which again for an owner operated boat that's a really good idea but that windscreen set up like that i really like i think that's great and look at the lighting in here as well very nicely done let's head on down to the lower deck there are in fact two accesses to the lower deck on this boat I'll show you the other one afterwards. This is for your guests up here. So you have the VIP cabin right at the front. Neat little window right in the bow, which is a rather nice touch. And then you've got overhead skylights as well. There's cushions on there at the moment. And in fact, that is an emergency escape hatch. So you have got another way out of this level if you need it. This has got the ensuite through here. Very nicely done. Love these finishes. I love the concealed lighting that's in back behind here. It's just all details. These little mirrored shelving units. Fantastic. You've got 
big wardrobes in here as you'd expect. Got a little dressing area as well. This is a nice touch. So this swings out so you can sit there and you've a mirror there so you can sort yourself out in the morning. And again, just tons of storage dotted about the place here, down under the bed. This drawers over here, another wardrobe on this side. Very nice. And another neat touch is you've got this big mirrored section here. That's actually a TV built into there. You can't see it until you turn the television on, then it shines through it. So that is your VIP guest cabin. You've also got two further guest cabins, one each side. Again, beautifully done with the way they've done the lighting in here. Little details like these reading lights, nicely angled, but they actually fold away flush into there. The climate control is in here as well. Look at the way they've brought this up and round. Very nice. There's big hull windows in here. AV equipment, of course. And again, storage in places like here. So your wardrobe. And a mirror in behind there. There's another guest cabin on this side. So three guest cabins in total. And again, no compromise. Really nice size. Again, it's got this lovely detailed finish and these pop-out lights and the big hull window. You'll see, you might see a little circular section, that, that's an opening porthole. And this one actually has ensuite access to the day heads. So what we'll do is we'll come around here, this is the normal access to it, and also allows cabin three to use it at night. But it means if only two of these cabins are in use, they can have their own private ensuites. And then during the day, you come in this way, that's that doorway through from that cabin. And again, really good size, separate shower stall in here. Lovely. Very nice indeed. Let's head on back down the boat because there is another lower deck area. You're wondering where the master cabin is. And I'm going to show you because we head through here and what we find is that the master cabin has its own private stairway and that's around here. So this is quite nifty. There's a grab rail all the way down here. And at the bottom of the stairs, again, you can see that Kelly Hoppin design with these little shelves with the knickknacks on, all nicely lit. Just lovely little design flourishes. In through this door then, well, this is the master cabin. It's a full beam with a boat, of course. And again, it's got those lovely details like the little bedside tables that curve out at the bottom and the top. You've got whole windows on both sides. Those circular sections are opening portals again. Nice little area down here. You can tuck yourself away with a bit of breakfast. Of course, wardrobes and that sort of thing are all the way around on this cabin. And there's a dressing area on the other side. That's very nice indeed. Let's go and have a look around here because of course, what you also get for this cabin is your own private ensuite. It's the biggest one in the boat, as you'd expect. So you've got the rainfall shower there. And then you've got the sink and so forth and the loo on this side. And the blind, so you can close that off for a bit of privacy if you want. But again, beautifully finished really nicely done there is just a touch of strobing when i move it's not happening in real life but yeah that is a lovely cabin i like all the lighting around the floor as well makes everything look like it's floating excellent let's go and have a look around the outside because we've got the decks to do we've got the flybridge to do and of course we've got the engine room to do so we'll head up back here and have a go so up out of here up to this lovely galley area and then out onto the aft deck i'll slip my shoes on and we'll take a tour around the outside lovely deep bulwarks on these proper little ship feel and one thing i really do like i don't know how well you can see this but these rails are oval they're not round so they're sort of flatter it's as though their round sections have been squashed flat and it gives it a real super yacht feel that i like very much indeed again you've got this white caulking in the decks and they've concealed things like the fuel fillers underneath here out of the way you can see that one just there for your diesel that's your waste outlet for your toilet holding tank nice stainless steel drains about the place and up here on the front there is your four deck area this has got the bimini on at the minute you wouldn't have that on when you're running the boat but you would if it's a hot day and you're stationary carbon fiber poles for that 
and that shades this area. There is a table, I won't do it now, but there's a table that folds out from inside there. Just lift those two cushions off and it lifts out so it's there when you need it. It's gone when you don't. And then up here, sunbathing. But you can lift up, for example, here. That lifts up like that. That, incidentally, is the escape hatch from that cabin down underneath. If you opened that with this closed, it would push it up because there's nothing stopping that lifting. So if you open that, it just takes that with it. But that means, of course, that with that up, and you can lock it in place so that when you lean against it, it doesn't move. That gives you a lovely area on the front there, looking out across the front of the boat. Let's walk right around to the front. These are nice, you might have seen these before. They're pop-up lights, and they come on as you lift them out. Neat touch. Stainless steel cup holders, nice detailing. And then anchor winch and anchor up here on the front. I like the way this walkway is sunken, and it goes right around the whole boat. That's that little window that we saw in that forward cabin. Now we'll head on back down this side. Other nice details, you've got little storage areas like this for deck gear, but you'll notice when you open them that they're on little gas struts to hold them up. You can see them just here. Again, attention to detail. Very nice. Let's head on back down this side. And down to the cockpit. And what we'll do this time is we'll take a loop around and we'll head for the flybridge. So that's up here. These little silver fellows, those are lights. So at night, this is all lit. All these steps are lit up. It's very nice. And the flybridge on here is huge for a 62 foot boat. Really good size. We'll start right at the back. This has got seating at the back. If you prefer, you can option this with sun pads on the back, but this I think is rather nice. So I'll just sit, again, particularly an anchor. And this is just a lovely bay behind you. To be able to sit out here in the sunshine, put your feet up on there, fantastic. And up above this flybridge, you can see there's a hard top. I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a second. But this is things like the radar, the antenna, the navigation lights, all up out of the way. And look at where they've color coded the radar and everything, so it all matches. That's fantastic. We'll head on forward underneath this big dining area or lounging area over on this side, and it's catered for by a wet bar over here. So if we lift this one. We'll find the grill and the sink. And underneath here, that's just a huge top loading fridge, but it's not the only fridge because there's another one just there. And even the essential ice maker. So that caters this area really well. This one's just storage, I think. Yeah, there we go. Let's drop that back down. And then ahead of here is the upper helm position. Again, as an owner operator boat, this is where you can spend a lot of time when you're cruising. And it means that your guests or your family or whoever's with you has got this seating area so they can join you for the ride. They're facing forward. You can sit four or five people all the way around here, maybe even six people to be honest. And uh, everyone can be together and, and enjoy the scenery and enjoy the boating. I think that's really important. Helm position here, again, you've got those glass screens for your instrumentation and so on. You've also got joystick control at both helm positions, and that's because this boat's IPS drive, so it means you can maneuver the boat from here. So whatever you do with this, it controls the boat. If you wanted to move the boat sideways, you push the little stick sideways, and it'll do it for you. So that makes life very easy from an owner's point of view. And up above this, huge hard top but it's got an opening section. You can see it's retracted at the moment, but this slides across here. So if you want shade, you've got it. If you want it open as we have today, well then that is properly open. Very nice flybridge though, isn't it? Really good size. Like that very much. Let's go and look at the engines. So we're back down here, down the steps. And the engines are under the cockpit floor so i just need to move this chair out of the way and this is our access hatch okay let's go and have a look so these are 
pair of Volvo Penta IPS 1200 engines. So they're pod drive, you can see the pods, or the top of the pods at least, in fact, down the back here. They're 900 horsepower each, and they're given this boat 30 knots plus, which is very impressive for a 62 foot boat. Range, you're looking probably about 250 miles. But a very nice engine room, there's plenty of space in here. This is that jet ski garage you can see across the back, but it doesn't stop you getting to these engines at all, which is very good. This is interesting. It's a system by which the short power cable, which is that yellow cable there, is on an electric drive, which means that when you unplug from the marina, rather than have to coil it all up and find somewhere to put it, you just push a button and it winds it in and winds the cable into there. Given they're quite a thick, chunky, heavy cable, that makes life a lot easier. What else have we got in here? Fire extinguishing system, of course, that's there. This is the hydraulics. And what else have we got? Battery management systems are across the back. This is the generator over here, this white box, and you can see things like the batteries are in these boxes down here, all carefully labelled and well lit. But that's a decent engine room for this size of boat. Excellent. Even little details like this, emergency torch charger. So your emergency torch is here and it's charged, and so that's there, ready to be used. Of course, this is a very well lit area anyway, but that's just an emergency backup like the bilge pump here, manual bilge pump, has electric pumps, but that's a backup system. A lot of thought gone into it. Very nice indeed. That up there is the letterbox passerelle that I was mentioning when we came on the boat. So that is a gangplank, basically, that extends out hydraulically, and then you can lift it or lower it, and it's to get onto the dock when you're stern to berth in the med, but that's where it lives when it's retracted, inside that little box. Excellent, that's very good, let's head on back out. So let's close that one back down. And I think what we're gonna do now is take a stroll back onto the front of the boat. That seems to me to be a nice place to finish up. You do get a sense of the size of this boat as you walk around it. And I'm gonna sit up here and say, Huge thanks to Berthon who've organised this tour for me. I'll put a link to them in the description. So if you want any more information, you can give them a shout. And as ever, huge thanks to you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that one. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of it also in the comments. And if you've not subscribed, do me a favour, hit that little bell. It really helps the channel and it'll keep you posted of more videos coming, of which I'm hoping there will be many. So we'll see you on those very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.